Alright guys, my name is Meta Goblin, and today I'm going to be giving you my classic Wood Warcraft Priest leveling guide. As always, this leveling guide will cover a number of sections. First of all, we'll have an FEQ section talking about buffs, but mostly talking about race options, as that is a big topic for priests. Then we'll go through the optimal talent build, then we'll go through the rotation and playstyle, you know, how to kill stuff very fast. Then we'll go through gear and stats, then it's all about one progression, and, and I'll finish off with some money tips which will help you saving money for you to get your mount at level 40. But just before jumping guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch, as when the game comes out, I'll be streaming a lot over all over on Twitch. So the first question people ask when they decide to play a priest is what race should I play, and does it actually matter? So my answer to that will be play whatever race you want to play. Just because you play a knight elf priest doesn't mean you're never going to get a raid spot. Although in all honesty, if the option is between you and a dwarf priest, the guild leader is probably going to pick the Dwarf Priest, right? Dwarf Priests have slightly higher priority over the other races because of their Fear Ward, which is a very strong Priest Racial. But I wouldn't just pick a Dwarf Priest for the sake of having better Racials, right? Because if you hate the look of a Dwarf, you hate Dwarves, you hate everything about Dwarves, you hate the look of them, you're just going to hate your character. And picking a race in vanilla is quite a huge time investment. You don't want to pick a race that you're just going to hate the look of, because you, want, want, you, know, you don't want to be in a situation where you hate logging into your own character. At the end of the day, there are going to be other Dwarf Priests in a raid to provide Fear Ward, so it isn't as absolutely essential for every single Priest in the game to be a Dwarf, okay? And Warriors, in all honesty, should be good enough to stand stands to remove Fear Effects of Berserk and Rage anyway. Obviously, when it comes to the Horde, there isn't massive stigma on what race you should play, you just pick whatever you actually want to play which race you like the look of. The next big question people ask is going to be about buffs. What buffs should I use and keep active on myself? The simple answer is 1. Shadow Form 2. Power Word Fortitude 3. Inner Fire and then 4. Shadow Guard if you're playing a troll and should also consider using Shadow Protection when dealing with Shadow Damage enemies, particularly in the Western and Eastern Plague Land. The next question is, what spec should I level in? Okay, most people are going to level in Deep Shadow spec as it provides the most damage. The other specs are doable, but have been less theory crafted and tested, and in all honesty they just kind of need their own video, so I'll probably make videos about different specs in the future. But in this video we're going to be covering the Shadow spec. So let's run through the talents, okay, the first point about talents I want to make is that in the community people will argue excessively over and over about one little talent point put here or there and you know, it, it's probably only going to make 0.01% damage to DPS anyway. But the build I'm going for today is, you know, the go-to build really. And it will also, I've noticed on YouTube there's a lot of builds that kind of consider private server errors and private server bugs this build will not take that into consideration because they're not going to work in Classic World of Warcraft. So, let's get on with the build. So let's go through the talents. Bear in mind that when I'm going through the talents here, I'm just kind of showing you the build very quickly. I'm not going to talk about each individual talent in a lot of detail. But nonetheless, there are two key talents that we do need to talk about. First being one specialization. This is where you're going to spend your points first. The reason why we do this is because as a priest, you're going to be using your wand pretty much 75% of the time, and this provides a really significant damage boost to your wand. From here, you're going to go directly into Spirit Tap, right? Spirit Tap is the second key talent. The reason why it's so good is because basically when you kill an enemy, your mana regeneration is practically doubled. And because you stack spirits really high as a priest, we'll, we'll talk about that in the gear section, your mana regen is even going to be it's going to be further magnified by this talent. And the great thing about spirit is that it actually scales ridiculously well the more you stack. And the next principle here really is you're just going to be specking deeper into shadow and just optimizing your shadow damage. And then we'll later finish off using some points in discipline to maximize our mana efficiency. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to max out, sorry, we're going to max out improve power shadow word first a little bit of shadow focus, then from here we want mindfully because it's going to be useful into rotation, we'll talk about that more in the DPS section. And then you kind of, you keep dipping into blackout just to get yourself further down the tree as it is quite useful, it will proc now and again and, you know, just negate a bit more damage on you. And then from here, shadow reach, very useful just to get into combat even earlier. Shadow Weaving, just a flat out damage boost, can't argue with it. Then you're going to get Vampiric Embrace, uh, Embrace, going to be useful in dungeon content. Then we dip back into Blackout, 
max out darkness, and then get shadow form. This is when your rotation totally changes, we'll talk about that more later. And from here, you just want to improve power word, a bit more stamina, can't whinge about it. Then improved shield, and then you go into meditation, get inner focus, that's going to be useful. And from here, you want to spec, well you can spec wherever you want, but really you're just trying to get further down the tree. You can go Martyr Dom, Unbreakable Will, it's, it's really up to you, just trying to get down the tree into Mental Agility, which is where you're going to finish off and get to level 60, which Mental Agility, you know, again, it's just a mana, efficient, uh, mana efficiency talent, that's pretty much it. So, you get these two key talents, one spec, Spirit Tap, Jobs are good in, then from there, it's all about increasing your shadow damage to just get that kill time reduced even more, and then you just spec some points into Discipline to further magnify your mana regeneration and that's pretty much it. So let's run through the rotation and playstyle section. So I'm going to be teaching you three rotations. First of all the low level rotation, secondly the mana efficient rotation which will last you to about level 40 and then the post level 40 shadow form extra damage rotation. Basically there is a more mana hungry rotation available to you once you get shadow form because you can basically do more, more damage with your shadow spells which means you start using your shadow spells more and what you're going to be doing is rotating between the mana efficient rotation and the mana hungry rotation uh, depending on how much mana you have obviously and depending also on your environment so it's important to note that getting a good wand as a priest is an essential component of the rotation as you're going to be wanding most of the time so that's my first note but anyway let's jump into the rotation in the lower levels, it's pretty simple, right? You're going to pre-buff with your power word shield. Remember, as you level up, you probably won't always have to use the max rank. You want the spell to be close to running out of absorption, just as the enemy dies, or even if you have to take two melee hits before the enemy dies. Then secondly, cast smite, possibly two smites if the range is good enough, then shadow ward pain, and then wand. Okay, and that's pretty much how you do it. If you haven't found a wand yet, then just use smite instead. I would recommend asking an enchanter to make your wand pretty early on. You could level up enchanting yourself, but bear in mind this will slow down your leveling. Personally, I would go for the low level quests that reward wands, for instance, the Bash Laran quest chain in Darkshore, or Aragul's Folly in Silver Pine Forest. That is two good options for the Alliance or the Horde. So in the higher levels, you will have access to more spells, which means your rotation will change. The first rotation I'm going to give you is the mana efficient rotation that you will use up until level 40. Okay, first of all, pre buff of power word shield, then cast smite, although you might not want to do that depending on how mana efficient it is. You kind of cast smite into mind blast before the enemy gets into melee range. Then, when the enemy gets into melee range, you use shadow word pain and then you just wand him to death, and that is pretty much your standard rotation. And like I said, you may want to skip using Smite in the opener if you're mana draining too much. And thirdly, we have the Shadow Form Extra Damage Rotation. So first of all, you're not going to pre-buff at all. You're going to use Mind Blast. Then you're going to Strafe while casting Shadow Word Pain, wait, waiting for the global cooldown to come off cooldown. Then you stop to cast Mind Flay. Then you're going to use a Rank 1 Psychic Scream when the enemy is in melee range. And you're going to use one Mind Flay and probably just finish him off with your wand from there. So this extra damage rotation is a little bit more mana hungry, but it can be sustainable. But if you feel like it's consuming too much mana, you can just go back to the standard rotation. But it should be fine. I mean, you're, you're saving mana by not casting Power Word Pain, since fear costs much less mana for basically the same effect of not taking damage. And the reason why we switched to this rotation is because in higher levels, the wands become worse. They don't scale very well because, you know, the enemies start increasing in health and the wand damage doesn't really bear that in mind as much. And the only reason why this rotation is possible after level 40 is because Shadow Form buffs the damage of your Shadow spells and that's what makes this rotation viable. Lastly, I want to finish off with tips for dealing with clusters of enemy and generally any difficult encounters. So when it comes to dealing with two enemies, I'd recommend burning through your mana a little bit more. You know, swap the wand in a rotation with Mind Flay, but only if you're protected by a shield and cast Mind Blast a little bit more, more often. You should probably just use it on cooldown to kill your the first enemy as fast as possible. You don't want to be taking damage from two enemies at once you know, for, as, for a long period of time, you want that phase to be as short as possible, so try and kill the first enemy as fast as humanly possible by burning all your mana and your cooldowns, and then continue with the standard rotation after you've killed the first enemy on the second enemy. If you're dealing with even more enemies, you're going to have to get smart with your mind control spell. 
If you pull a group of enemies with mind control, they will argue the mind controlled enemy first and just flat out kill him. So what you want to do against three enemies, first of all, pull with mind control, let everyone attack you as the mind controlled enemy, and while you're, while you're also using mind control, attack a second mob, right, with, you know, with every, every single thing you have, basically to lower his health as well. Then three, use a stop casting macro to cancel a mind control. That's when all the aggro will then get converted onto you and all three mobs will start running at you. Then what you want to do is quickly finish off the mob with your mind control. Um, sorry, quickly finish off the mob that you mind controlled with a mind blast or a mind flay. Um, the reason why we want to do this rather than just let, letting it die is because you won't get XP and you won't get loot. So if you let the mind controlled enemy die, which is a bit of a bummer, but oh well. Then... Fifthly, put the two mobs left over into a fear, and then finish the second mob that had lower health with a mind flay or your wand, and then you just finish off with the standard rotation on the last enemy. If there's even more enemies than three, then what you want to do is apply the kind of, you know, the same technique, but after you've killed the first mob, I'd recommend running away and just trying to reset. You can also apply this technique when dealing with elite enemies. A very skilled priest can very easily solo elite enemies out in the open world. So when it comes to gearing guys, it's pretty straightforward. Your main stat you want to prioritize is spirits, and the second stat after that is intellect. The reason why I want to stack spirits so high is because the more spirit you get, the more effective the spirit becomes because it just scales so ridiculously well. And obviously it has really good synergy with spirit tap, as spirit tap basically doubles your spirit and doubles your mana regen and it just gets quite ridiculous it even feels like you're drinking sometimes when you get spirits up if you've stacked enough spirit so yeah it's a pretty good talent when it comes to one progression i already have a video that you can check out and i'll link that in the description and um you know you can just check that out after we talk about the money saving tips when it comes to saving money as a priest it's it's pretty easy okay than the, any other class because you basically won't be needing to buy stuff. So the tip list is a little shorter than the other classes that you know class guides I've made. The first tip is to get tailoring to make bags very quickly. Um, you know, more bag space means more trash loot in your bags, which overall means more money. And it's important to bear in mind that obviously crafting does take time; it will decrease your leveling time. That's why you should only use it when you're waiting for spawns. Or you're just waiting for a boat or something like that. Second tip is to check the quest item money reward. You might need an add-on to do this. And obviously cho always choose the most expensive item money reward and vendor it. Third tip is just to quickly make a bank hole, you know. If you see mat mats in the world that you know will sell more in the auction house, you know, you can just send them to a bank hole and leave them in the mail for up to 30 days and it won't, it just won't go anywhere. It's basically a bit of a trick to get infinite inventory space. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end the video there. My name is Ameta Goblin, and to my next video, ciao.